What's going on, everybody? This is Broken Games HDR, and I'm going to give you my top 10 most anticipated games for 2023. The new year is right around the corner, about three days from the time of this recording. So I wanted to get this video out to y'all and tell you what games I'm looking forward to the most. This list might surprise you a little bit with what's on it and what's not on it. Now, I tried to comprise my list of games that actually had a 2023 release date or just or are just very likely to release in 2023. 2023 is very stacked with games. I know people say that every year, but it's very true for next year. I know that because when I was putting this list together, it's usually, you know, it's usually easy for me each year to put this list together. But this time I had to add games, remove games, rearrange my list a lot. Like this is probably, I don't know, the 20th version of this list that I had to had to put together because I really had to like sit and think about it and really like go with my gut of like, what am I actually excited for? And what, you know, am I really anticipating? So here's the list. So at number 10, I have Dead Space Remake. This is probably going to be the first game I also actually buy for the year. It comes out in January, I believe January 27th, if my memory serves me correct. And I'm a huge Dead Space fan. Always have been since day one when I, you know, bought the original game um, over a decade ago, uh, made by uh, EA Visceral. Um, and now it's the remake is being done by EA Motive. So I'm very excited for this game. I, I know this studio is going to do it justice. Uh, you know, they're treating it right. They they're very confident about it. It seems because they've been doing developer diaries all along the way. So, yeah, I think I'm definitely going to start out the year right with Dead Space Remake. And it also shocks me how many people never actually played, uh, you know, the original Dead Space. I, you know, I, I hear people all the time say they never played the original. I'm like, what the hell were y'all doing when this game came out all those years ago? And probably y'all y'all was probably playing Call of Duty. Shame on y'all, you know, because that, you know, unfortunately, a lot of games that came out during the PS3 and 360 era, People never really gave a chance or they got like kind of overshadowed or shoved under the rug because that was the generation where everybody was, you know, obsessed with Call of Duty and first person shooters and all that shit. So games that were really amazing, a lot of them, uh, you know, were kind of ignored by a huge uh, genre of people. But I have no doubt that people are, you know, newcomers are going to love uh, Dead Space Remake uh, when it comes out in January. So that's number 10 for me. Number nine, I have... Wolong Fallen Dynasty. This is essentially another kind of Neo Souls-like game from Team Ninja. Team Ninja made uh, Neo 1 and 2, games I've beaten and games I, I really enjoy. So this is kind of like a deviation slightly from Neo. It's a little bit, it's a little bit different uh, gameplay wise, but very similar. And I love Souls games. I think everybody knows that. Uh, the reason why it's so uh, why it's number nine and not a better spot on the list is because, uh, to be honest with you, I have I have souls fatigue right from Elden Ring, because Elden Ring was a souls game that was obviously longer than usual. Usually these souls uh, games are you know maybe 40, 50 hours, but because of all the content, all the bosses, and you know this is the first real open world styled souls game. You know, you could uh, you could put in a hundred hours. You know, really trying to fight all the bosses and do everything in in the game. So after I beat the game after a hundred hours, I just got major fatigue. I uninstalled the game when I beat it in April, and I'm like, I don't want to play another Souls game for a long time. And even though it's December now, I still kind of feel that way um, because even though yes, I love Elden Ring, I think it's a it's a, it's a great game. Uh, it still gave me fatigue from how long. You know, I had to play it because I do feel like it overstayed uh, its welcome a little bit. It got a little bit, a little bit long in the tooth, and I still prefer my Souls games to be sh on the shorter end. Um, you know, more around maybe 40, uh, 50 hours max, and I still like the linear style of Souls games. So that's number nine. Number eight is another Souls game. Once again, love Souls games, but I'm a little bit fatigued. So this game actually probably deserves a better spot, just like Wolong. But like I said, what Elden Ring did to me is still having lingering effects. So number eight is Lies of P. 
This is essentially a Pinocchio Souls game. It's Pinocchio meets Bloodborne. You don't really gotta say much more than that. I mean, we've been begging PlayStation to give us a Bloodborne sequel, give us a Bloodborne remaster. So in the meantime, we have Lies of P, which looks like a great Souls game, obviously inspired by Bloodborne, as I said, and with a with Pinocchio inspiration, a, a, a dark spin of uh, Pinocchio. But, you know, the Pinocchio story has a has a lot of dark versions of it, you know, movie wise. I think there's like five or six versions of Pinocchio at this point, And I think like three of them came out this year or within the last few years. And the original story of Pinocchio, you know, is actually pretty dark in itself, I believe. Um, you know, Disney just put some magical spin on it, but the original story, I believe, is pretty dark. But anyway, number eight is Lies of P. Number seven is Stellar Blade. So this is a game that originally started out as Project Eve, but is now Stellar Blade. And the combat looks amazing. Has really cool action. Now, it looks a little bit unga bunga, but I'm gonna ca I'm gonna categorize it as unga, right? It doesn't seem like it goes all the way into the stratosphere of bunga. Get what I'm saying? Never go full unga bunga. I like unga games, right? I like it. You know, just just meet me in the middle. Don't go all the way, you know, off the spectrum and go crazy with it. You know, I like that middle of the road type over the top action. Right. Like like, for example, I think Metal Gear uh, what was it Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Yeah, they went off the they went off the deep end with the over the top, ridiculous, nonsensical action with that shit. This and, you know, I'm not saying Revengeance was trash, but it was over the top. Right. Stellar Blade seems to be that type of action game where it's just enough action. And it's yes, it's going to be a little bit over over the top, but but not too much. It's going to rein itself in. And the combat looks cool. The visual, you know, visually, it looks like a, a great game. Um, not sure about, the, but you know, about the story. The stories in these type of games usually be some bullshit, if we're being honest. Uh, but yeah, I look forward to this game. So Stellar Blade is number seven. Number six is Redfall. Now, originally, when Redfall was announced and when we first saw it, I was not excited for it at all because what it seemed to be to me at first was just another back for blood you know um another game another co-op uh not zombie but vampire shooter and i'm like nope that's gonna be another back for, for blood not interested but arcane is working on this game and they've made it clear it's not exactly that if they're to be believed and i have no reason not to believe them they said this game is actually story driven um, it's a single player game first. It just has the option for co-op, which changes everything for me because there's a big difference between a game that's a co-op game that you could play by yourself and a game that's a single player game that also has co-op. There's a big difference there. I shouldn't have to explain it, but the way the games are designed and the way the game operates um, is, is very different between the two. So being that they said this is a story driven, you know, uh, it, it's it's a game that you could really play by yourself and still have an amazing experience. They designed it that way. Um, and the gameplay also looks good from what I've seen. Not nothing I, that that necessarily blows me away, but it looks solid and I and I got to see more. And Arcane is, is really good at what they do. And, I, and I'm pretty sure, you know, they're going to do things that are outside of the box as far as the powers and the abilities go, because they've obviously made you know, things like Dishonored, which which I love. And so that, that skill tree is going to be impressive. So, hey, shout out to Xbox. They actually made it on my list for next year. Number six is Redfall. Number five is Assassin's Creed Mirage. Now, I haven't been excited for an Assassin's Creed game in a very long time. Whatever the last Assassin's Creed game that played like a classic Assassin's Creed that's the last time I've cared about Assassin's Creed. When they switched over to the game essentially being uh, this RPG game where enemies are, are, are sponges um, and you have uh, this, this gigantic map with way too much shit to do that takes like a hundred 
plus hours to actually, you know, uh, conquer and beat. I hate that shit. I like the classic Assassin's Creed games and Assassin's Creed Mirage is said to be, you know, um, like that 20, 30 hour, uh, more linear um, Assassin's Creed game. And that's what I want. I want the modern day version of what Assassin's Creed 2 essentially was. This, this, uh, and you know, and I think Ubisoft understands there's, there's an audience for that. There's the people who obviously like the direction, the new direction that Assassin's Creed has went in. Because hell, as, as much as I despise it and, and hate it, it sells very well. And I honestly, I kind of hate you people who like Assassin's Creed and support what Assassin's Creed is now. Because I want them to go back to, to what it was permanently and mainly. But since they are servicing people who like the other side you know they're trying to service all people i can be cool with that but i still hate you you know you new people who support this new assassin's creed but yes yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this because I've, I've been waiting for assassin's creed uh to return to its roots so assassin's creed mirage is number five number four is spider-man 2 some people might be surprised that that's not in a uh, in a higher spot. It's not in the top three. But the reason why it's not in the top three is because we haven't seen gameplay, right? We haven't seen any gameplay unless I'm bugging. We just saw that one um, cinematic trailer. It, it was it was in engine, I think. You know, it was in engine, but it wasn't actually gameplay at that PlayStation showcase, which at this point feels feels like two years ago. I think it was maybe last year i think it's probably probably been one year since we saw it but it feels like two years to me at this point right so if it if we actually saw a gameplay i would put it in a better place but we have it and i'm a little bit concerned about how much they're actually going to do with this this sequel of course you know i don't doubt insomniac games but are they really going to do that much more with the combat with the fact that we're going to be playing with Peter and Miles versus what they did in the original Spider-Man, you know, in 2018. Sometimes I I forget that. Sometimes I confuse that that, that Spider-Man came out 2017, but it's 2018, I think. So I'm just unsure, are they really going to like make big changes and is it going to be a big difference from 2018? I, I, I felt like they went in the right direction with Miles Morales and, and that combat. But this is Spider-Man 2. It's apparently gonna be PS5 only if you wanna believe Sony. So I think you need, they need to do a lot more. This can't, I, I, you know, I'm just worried about it being kind of just another Spider-Man game. Like, are we gonna be able to travel to different boroughs? Maybe not all five, but we need to go somewhere besides Manhattan, right? So I'm just, there's, just, there's just concerns I have there. And that's why it's not a, on a better place on my list. Because really what we're um, analyzing our hype for this game is really based on the first game and what we think or what we hope they're going to do. So that's why uh, Spider-Man 2 is number four. Number three, and this is probably the only game on the list where I'm very unsure if it'll actually release in 2023. It's Judas. The game that was revealed uh, at the Jeff Keighley's Game of the Year Awards. This is the long awaited game by Ken Levine, who also made Bioshock. This is essentially a Bioshock spiritual successor. It's a, you could almost consider it Bioshock 4, but I think they are actually uh, working on a Bioshock 4 game. So we're supposed to get Bioshock 4 and, and you know, we're going to get this new game uh, by Ken Levine called Judas. and. The trailer that we saw, I think it was maybe like two minutes long, but it looked amazing. We saw bits and pieces of gameplay, but I love Bioshock. So what we saw, you know, the the, the aesthetic, the the art style, the just the everything about how they make Bioshock games, the the underlying themes, you know, the the story that's usually connected to it, the, the gameplay, um, the visual. I love everything about Bioshock. So. Yes, Judas had to be in my in, in my top three, and I can only hope it releases in uh, 2023. I believe Ken Levine made a statement early early this year about the game about they weren't 
going to show the game until it was almost ready. So since he's showing this game now at the end of 2022, which was the Game Awards trailer, uh, it's safe to say that it's soon to be ready and could drop in 2023. So yeah, Judas is number three. Number two is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I'm a big Star Wars fan. See all the movies, watch all the TV shows. <laughs> I read the lore. Some of you may not know about this, but I go down deep rabbit holes uh, with, with Star Wars and, and the lore and, and the stories and, and the characters. Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. So a Star Wars game uh, with, you know, picking up the story again with Cal Kestis, a little bit older um he's gonna have more powers from what we've seen in the trailer he's maturing as a jedi um he's gonna uh, there was a uh, news that they're adopting kind of like the neo ghost of tsushima style gameplay where he's gonna have like i think four or five different stances and the different stances are gonna be uh are, are going to uh be so he can adapt to certain situations um so and, and, you know, the first one was a, a Souls, was was a very light Souls kind of game, but it wasn't all the way. Some people didn't expect that, but I, I, I liked it. Um, and I think, you know, they're going to take a lot of, uh, uh, because the first one was a, it was a little bit underrated. It landed in the 70s, I think. And I think, you know, that it, the game essentially is the first uh, iterations of, of, of a lot of people's games. That was a prototype. Now they had they laid the foundation and they're just gonna go you know balls to the wall uh, with all the um, enhancements and improvements for for this sequel. The story in the first one was really good. Gameplay was 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 it was solid. It wasn't wasn't the best, uh, but I'm sure they're gonna fine tune it and it's gonna be a lot tighter. So, and the, obviously the visuals look great. They got a great cast of characters. So, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is number two. Now, before I get to my number one, I want to give an honorable mention to a few games because, as I as I said, uh, when I was making this list, I had to add some games, remove some games, rearrange, and a lot of games in 2023 didn't make it on my list that I'm looking forward to. Um, so, honorable mention to these games, and some of you might be surprised. Uh, Flintlock Siege of Dawn, Wild Hearts, Suicide Squad, Atomic Heart, Factions 2, I put Factions 2, Factions 2 was not on my list mainly because I don't think it's releasing in 2023. So that's why I'm putting it as an honorable mention in case it releases in 2023. If, if it actually had a 2023 release date, it would probably be number two for me. It would probably be number two. Um, uh, Final Fantasy VII uh, Rebirth, I, I don't think that's releasing in 2023. If, if it was, it would definitely be on my list. Uh, Alan Wake 2 and... Final Fantasy 16 as an honorable mention. Yeah, it's 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 not making my list. Um, I know some people probably would want an explanation for that. And it's really only because the gameplay looks good, but I'm just unsure about the characters, the story, the setting, just everything else probably outside of the combat is just like a few question marks for me. And I look forward to it, but I'm not like, excited like you know i don't get that feel feeling of excitement when i look at that final fantasy 16 trailer and like oh man i can't wait well, when it gets here it gets gets here it's a day one for me but i'm not like jumping out of my seat to play it you know it, it just doesn't give me that feeling and emotion but it's still a day one and you know all the games i mentioned in my honorable mentions are most likely day ones as well but time to get to my number one this should come this should come as no surprise to anybody if you know me if you follow me if you listen to me this is not a shock no surprise there is no uncertainty from you know from the time i was at number 10 if you know me you knew what my number one was going to be my number one is resident evil 4 remake yes a remake and there are those who would say oh man it it's it's a bad thing. You know things are bad when a remake is your number one. I completely fucking disagree. I don't abide by that. I do not subscribe to the, oh, we're in bad gaming times or things are bad when you look forward to remakes. I completely disagree with that bullshit. It just means that one of my favorite games of all time 
just happens to be coming out next year. That's all it means. Y'all know, I I bought Resident Evil 4 on pretty much every single platform there is. Every platform that they ported it to, and they ported it to damn near everything, I've bought it there, and I have beat it there. I don't buy collector's editions. I've bought the collector's edition for Resident Evil 4. Not only did I buy the collector's edition, I bought the game three times. I pre-ordered it three times. That's how much I love this game. This is this is a an anomaly. You gotta understand that. This is an anomaly. This is not some everyday normal game for me. I absolutely love this game. I know this game inside and out. It's it's probably the game that I've beaten more more than any other game. It's it's definitely top three. It, it's top, it's absolutely top my, in, in my top five games of, of all time. Maybe top three. I would have to think about it. So I don't think the fact that it's number one for me really means anything negative. It just happens to align like that, that in 2023, you know, my uh, one of my favorite games of all time is just being remade. But when you look at the rest of my list, these are, these are essentially new games, new IPs, uh, sequels to recently new things, aside from Dead Space uh, Remake, obviously, which is number 10. So yeah, that's that's all it means. 2023 is stacked, as I said. I think the gaming industry is in a great place. I am not one of those people who, sub who subscribes to, oh, the, you know, gaming is in one of the worst places it's ever been. And this gaming generation has, you know, has been the worst we've ever had. Bullshit. Bullshit. Some of y'all think saying that is a personality trait. And honestly, most of y'all say that every damn generation. Have y'all realized that, that every recent generation for people is always the worst one? People said it for the PS4 generation, people, the, the, the PS4 and Xbox One generation, and people said it for the three, 360 and PS3 generation. Yep, people said it, every single generation, they always do. So some of y'all just have like that recency where everything, where, where everything that's recent is the worst thing. I'm loving this generation, love it. So I just went on a little bit of a rant there, but Resident Evil 4 is my number one. Thank y'all for watching. Hit the like button. I don't know if I'm gonna make another video before the new year. So if I don't, um, you know, have a great new year. Hope you enjoy your holidays. Be safe. Uh, I, I, I wanna say I got some things planned for 2023 with this channel, but I'm not really that type of guy. I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm I'm just, I'm just keep doing the same shit I've been doing. I'm gonna be real with y'all. You know, it ain't ain't no oh resolutions or big changes coming. Eh, no. If you like what you what you've been getting, you're just gonna get more of the same tip. You know, maybe a little bit more. Well, that's all you're really gonna get. That's it. So here's to another year. Hit the like button. Follow me on Twitter if you're not. Hit the notification bell. Uh, check out the Weapon Wheel Discord. Weapon Wheel will, will return uh, at the end of end of January. Check out the links in the description for all the information that you need. Hit the join button to become a member of the channel. Let's get out of here, y'all. I'm out. Peace.